Hey guys, it's Cass. Welcome back to my channel and it's time for a September wrap up. So I can't believe we're already into October, which is my birthday month and Halloween and just the best month in my opinion. <laughs> As always, timestamps are listed below because um, I usually in these wrap ups go over the books I read, which I do throughout the month, um, life updates for the whole month, and then games that I was playing this month. First, we're gonna jump into the books. I feel like I've been leaving this towards the last part, but books we're gonna talk about. Um, I'll show you the clips of me talking about them throughout the month in just a second, but some quick updates. Um, I had started Commonwealth. I'm not that far into it. It's just, it's not, I'm not vibing with it. So I don't know if I'm necess, I'm gonna DNF it maybe temporarily. I just don't feel like it's the time for this book right now. It just doesn't feel like the right time to be reading it. So I started this, I'm going to DNF it at least temporarily and we'll see if I come back around to it. Um, I am also currently reading The Shining Life, which if you saw my book haul, I just bought this. I was hoping to finish this before the end of September to have it be like my final book for wrap up. But so far, this one is really interesting. And for me personally, um, I'll probably deep dive in this again a little bit more. But the first page I flipped open to, it's for Nick and the very first sentence in here says, my dad died. And it's like, could that be? I don't know, do you believe in signs? I sometimes do and don't. Um, but so far, this is really interesting, and so far it's kind of giving me the impression that this 11-year-old maybe is taking things a little too literal, as sometimes kids can do, and sometimes we can do as adults, but going through things um, and trying to figure out what he meant by solving the puzzle to life, and he's really determined to do that now that his dad is at the beginning of the book is through the stages of dying um, and kind of recollecting all that. So um, I won't deep dive more into this. Like I said, I'm not that far in. So was hoping to finish this, have not been able to. And then the other two I started and again, not have not gotten, I'm only like right here on page 21. Um, I am reading The Book Thief, 1984 but I'm going to temporarily pause these and I really have like a calling to read these in November. So these should be in my November wrap up of The Book Thief, um, 1984. And then with 1984, there was a big Reddit post about reading A Brave New World by George Orwell um, at the same time and just like different perspectives of different things that are being manipulated and controlled and how they're a great read together. So I wanna find A Brave New World and read this in November. And then coming in October, um, I said this during that book haul as well, I have two books that have my name Cassandra in them and I'm doing a deep dive on those in October. So you'll see a book about that at the end of October. But <laughs> without further ado in that aspect, um, I'm gonna show you all the books that I read through September. I'm back in my office again, just to do a quick review of um, The Body Keeps the Score. Now, I've been reading this book for, I think three or four months, um, but I feel really good with the progress I made on it um, and was having it kind of be a slow burn. Um, for lack of a better term, just because I, it's a lot of information. It was a lot of book to take in um, and I didn't like want to overwhelm myself in any kind of way of trying to take in too much information because like I've continued to say pretty much through any video I've posted where I've talked this year, it's just been a very emotionally heavy, heavy like healing type of year. Um, I say that, but I also recognize that I think healing and processing and learning and changing your perspective and just coming to different places with 
coming to different places with trauma and things that happen in your life um, ultimately is a lifelong thing. But, and I don't have the book with me because I did pass it on to my husband who has now started to read it. Um, but I gave it a four star. I had to change my battery and I tried to lift my camera up. I will try to take a picture and insert it here really quickly of how I have my camera balanced right now, which is not very safe. I have a owl glass cup with an old green tea latte Starbucks cup with a bowl holding up my camera. <laughs> Um, right in front of my screen so hopefully I throw that picture in here but I don't actually have the book with me um, because my husband's been reading it um, but I think what I was saying before I had to stop and change my battery and everything was that um, I was reading this book over several months period and in the beginning I definitely was more excited about it. I do recommend, honestly, everyone to read it, especially like everyone has trauma. A lot of people, pretty much almost, almost everyone has like some form of childhood trauma or something you went through in your adolescence that caused trauma or even into your adulthood of trauma. Um, and just the ways that it attaches and attacks and changes and is such a big part of part of the makeup of your body um, and how that changes over time and how you adapt and and just how to process and heal everything um, but what I was saying is I gave it a four star um, I think I was much more excited about reading it in the beginning versus the end um, I think I said in my August wrap up that I like hit a point of like not being necessarily excited to read it anymore um, and I don't know exactly why I really struggled through the last like three or four chapters um, and maybe in some way I feel like I got everything out of the book that I could get out of it prior to that point. I also just think too much time really almost had elapsed since I'd been in the same thinking pattern as I was when I was already beginning to read it. I've, uh, I guess that's a, I don't know, I guess that's a great way to just kind of talk about and explain that even over this year, I have changed so much about the way that I'm processing things and healing things and dealing with things and talking about things and different self-help, self-healing, communication with people, um, you know, exponentially much more good days, even though there's some bit of chaos still happening this year versus bad days. The beginning of this year was definitely much heavier than where I'm at now in September. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't know if I said today is um, September 2nd when I finished The Body Keeps the Score um, and it was also the 52 out of my 52 book challenge so I finished my Goodreads challenge for the year of reading 52 books and we are on September 2nd so I have so much more time left in this year I'm still Pretty much I have all of September, October, November, and all of December. So I have four more months still in this year to continue reading and I started to get my books that I'm going to do a book haul on in, um, as I say, November and September as well. Um, but I'm pretty close to finishing um, Moonwalking with Einstein, but I paused on that to push myself to finish this book both because I wanted it to be a significant one to be ending out my Goodreads-like challenge, even though obviously I'm not done reading for the year. Um, but I also wanted to finish it, like I had said in my August wrap-up, for my husband to be able to read it. But overall, I don't think I learned anything from this book necessarily. Um, I think it was just a very good read to understand parts of things that I already knew better. Um, and I think I said this in the past, I'm pretty far, this sounds really arrogant and I don't mean it to sound that way, but, <laughs> but anytime you put but in something, right? 
I'm on a several year long journey of healing things, especially toxic things and trauma. And it's kind of really been, honestly, the last six years since I've been with my husband. Um, and that's just because of the safety and comfort and communication and all of those type of very important things to have in place in order for a person to heal trauma. Um, and so this book was really good at just kind of like validating my own steps that I've taken in life and the, my own things that I've learned over the six years and have tried to apply over the six years. Um, and honestly, I'm genuinely really excited for my husband to read it because I think there's a lot of things in there that he will really connect with. Um, but yeah, I, I do recommend, like I said, I just don't, I think it was just a satisfying read to kind of give descriptors of things that I have kind of gone through in healing. Um, and why those things are so beneficial and like I said just like reconfirmed things I have in my life now like my comfort and my safety and my trust and my love and everything that I genuinely have in my life now that has allowed me to be able to be in the best place that I personally can be as myself as a human being if that makes sense um, so I think more so now, I would love to find books that help me to connect with others better. Like this, this is a great reminder of a book that everybody's got some shit and everybody either has healed, needs to heal, will heal, will process things hopefully or um you know that there can be different layers and degrees and versions of people um and i think this book is great at kind of showing that if someone is toxic or they are behaving a certain way or they do something specific to you that is really awful um, not that it makes it okay to any degree, but it can help you recognize or try to not take it so personal because this person possibly, especially if it's someone you know, you may know some of the trauma that they've been through, but also it just calls attention to like a reminder of this person that is really being extremely awful to you or has put you in a very awful situation or a really shitty just like crappy evil rude type of situation um that they have their own trauma and they are in their own journey of either healing it or pushing it away and and within the book, I think it's really great at like talking about ways that this trauma manifests in people's bodies um, and how it comes out in behaviors and attitudes and a lot of times it comes out in addictions for people. Um, and again, not to sound arrogant, but it, some of that stuff can feel somewhat like common sense a bit. like. Clearly someone's struggling with something, they have this addiction or they're going through this thing, they got some shit that they've been through, they've had a rough life. Like, I feel like everybody kind of has that general gist of just understanding of human beings in general. Um, but I think that this is helpful for people who want to know like the nitty gritty of why something is the way it is or the general statistic reaction for people or ways that they have found for the brain and the body to heal from these specific traumas and there is I mean like honestly the last hundred pages almost that's a little dramatic probably the last like 80 pages in the book um is references to other materials other books mentioned um all the work cited because it's kind of like cited through the entire book of 
you know, um, like AP style of where they have the number next to a specific thing and at the bottom of the page it says where they found it and then it links to the end of the book where it tells you to be able to find the information so you can go through and read and review and do so much further reading on this. You can look up stuff about the author, the other books that he recommends, um, go into any of the scientific studies that he mentions in here, any of the studies that he's been part of, any other colleagues, like anything like that is all there. So it's a it can be continually an invaluable resource for people to get more information, but it is a very scientific based book. But the reason I appreciate it so much is because I'm such a feelings based person. I equate everything and link everything to a feeling um, or like an emotion. And so linking the emotions with some kind of like scientific something within your body is just like, uh, is beautiful to me. Um, so I valued the book for that, but I think I was like a 12 minute review on this book. Um, but I definitely recommend it to everyone and I think that everyone should read it. Um, and it, it's a lot of information to process, but you could take your time with it. Um, but yeah, four star and that's The Body Keeps the Score. That is my 52 out of 52 book challenge for Goodreads done. Bedhead forever. <laughs> We're gonna chat about Wolf Hollow. I just finished it. It is ages 10 and up book. I think it's a young reader. I guess I would call it like a middle grade book. Um, overall, I literally just finished it right before I turned on the camera. Um, overall, I liked it. It makes me curious to read um, her next book, which is called Beyond the Bright Sea. And then she also has an adult novel um, called Those Who Favor Fire. Um, so I will be looking into getting those because I just really appreciated her way of writing. This was a almost 300 page book and was really easy to get through. The book is about Wolf Hollow and I think like initially I thought that this would have more to do with wolves than it does. Um, they're not involved at all, really. <laughs> um, but in a way, I guess you could say that they are, because it's like the whole saying of like a wolf in sheep's clothing kind of situation. But in this book specifically, um, we follow our main character and she is in elementary school and it's about bullies in her life, but then also someone who saves her, but then just kind of the ins and outs of when someone lies and that is believed and how much bad things that can cause and then when the truth comes out sometimes people are so upset at what they already believed sorry i'm picking hair off my other book um they're so upset at what they already believed and are unwilling to change their mind is what i gather you know apart from the story itself within the book that's what I take away from it. It's, I think it's a good middle grade book that talks about, you know, bullying and lying and because our main character is 11 in the book, um, you know, and not being believed and trying your hardest to get someone else to fight, to stand up for themselves and when they won't, um, and basically just what happens when someone lies and that's believed over the truth and like I said kind of like how bad that can go um for the outcome of things that happen in this book but overall I feel really good about it uh, it was a really good read and just I think a big thing too is just how we misjudge people's character or because we think someone is gross or creepy or odd that we sometimes consider them in society as less than human or we don't give them the same opportunities um we really cast them out we judge them very harshly um and how that even changes their life and then um the loop around of course is that when someone's proven wrong that they misjudge someone's character um you know unfortunately usually always way too late after the fact 
but that is what Wolf Hollow is all about and I haven't rated it yet but I think I'm gonna go with a four star honestly great middle grade book I'm debating holding on to it for my son um, so he can read it uh, but we'll see I may I may do that um, <clears throat> I did end up dog earring two pages in here one thing I dog-eared in here, it said, but I had learned over the past weeks that believing in something doesn't always make it so. And it's like, heck yeah, that hits. <laughs> um, and then this other one that I thought was really beautiful in here, it said, but, but then a better thought occurred to me, and this was the one I carried away with me that day. If my life was to be just a single note in the endless symph symphony, how could I not sound it out for as long and as loudly as I could? Um, whoa, light change. But recommend definitely a middle grade. Definitely can see how it could relate and give encouragement and even make, you know, an emotional change for someone in middle grades. Um, but I still think it was good as an adult and I think it was an easy read. So yeah, that's Wolf Hollow. And then right now I'm reading... Moonwalking with Einstein, 1984, and Commonwealth, but I may end up grabbing something different as well. Um, and you'll hear about that in the next book review for September. So, yeah, that's Wolf Hollow. Back in your favorite spot on the couch. For one, it's not morning. For two, you were probably hearing loud thudding. It is my son playing with the basketball hoop on the back of his door. It's really loud. Anywho, I am here to review Moonwalking with Einstein. I just finished it. And I'm not impressed. Um, I'm giving it a two star. I note in here he says it's not a how-to for memory um, or how to learn how to memorize things better. But to be honest, this is the most deceiving title in a long time that I can remember, to be completely honest. Um, I feel like Einstein is irrelevant. Um, I don't understand the moonwalking part. I don't know, just the title does not fit the book in any way, shape, or form, period. And, spoiler, their key to memorizing anything is all about trying to make things visual in imagery. Um, one thing that I did like about it and why I gave it a two star and not a one star is because they talked about like why you don't remember anything before ages four and three and whatever. Um, I like some other things that were said in the beginning, like in the very beginning I dog-eared a few pages um, where it says we can only think about roughly seven things at a time. Like I found some of this stuff pretty interesting. And here it says um, on page 67 it says who we are and what we do is fundamentally a function of what we remember, which I found an interesting brain thought. Um, and then a few pages back it says, without time, there would be no need for a memory, but without a memory, would there be such a thing as time? I don't mean time in the sense that, say, physicists speak of the fourth dimension, the independent variable, the quantity that the quantity that dilates when you approach the speed of light. I mean psychological time, the tempo at which we experience life passages, time as a, time as a mental construct. So it's like interesting thoughts and then you know I like wrote in a whole section in here and I said this part was just really interesting. It says um, monotony collapses time, novelty unfolds it. You can exercise daily and eat healthy and live a long life while experiencing a short one. If you spend your life sitting in a cubicle and passing papers, one day is bound to blend unmemorably into the next and disappear. That's why it's important to change routines regularly and take vacations to exotic locales and have as much new experiences as possible that can serve to anchor our memories. Creating new memories stretches out psychological time and lengthen lengthens our perception of our lives, which, okay, but that's about it. <laughs> so like, yes, I appreciated those things. Definitely, I felt like so much of this read like a magazine. Um, article that was just like never ending and about 200 pages too long um, which is saying a lot because the book's only 255 pages of text in here to read um, I feel like it was about 200 pages too long um, and I feel like 
I appreciated the science aspect of what they were going for, but this really falls in the genre or like the line of the famous YouTube things um, or the famous challenges of I did something for a year and this is what happened and I wrote a book and that's literally all this is. It isn't any groundbreaking anything. It isn't anything new, it isn't anything you haven't heard before, a lot of it is just like mumbling on about stories. I appreciated, like I said, those few things that I read to you, um, but it doesn't help anyone with memory, it's not going to help you with memory, it's not going to answer any of your questions about memory, and this isn't a how-to book. So I guess I had clearly the very wrong idea going into this because my original goal going into reading this was seeing if there was like just a note or a hack or tips or something about working on your memory because of my TBI and my lack of short-term memory since my accident. Um, but this told me it honestly like downgraded anything and everything I heard in cognitive and speech therapy for 18 months. So disappointing. I appreciated aspects of it here and there, which is why I gave it a two out of five. Um, honestly, I would give it more like a one and a half, but I can't do half star ratings on Goodreads. So that is Moonwalking with Einstein. Um, honestly, I'm probably just going to donate this before we start to travel. You're getting the corner of another book right here. <laughs> You're sitting on the other book, but what you see the corner of right here is the unbearable lightness of being and I think that's probably what I'm gonna deep dive into the most right now anyway um, but yeah that was moonwalking with Einstein and I'll see you after I finish the next book this is philosophical for philosophy's sake and sex and a lot of sex and I guess it is about not I guess I know it's about we're following two separate couples um, through a post-war or an active war situation. A lot of it takes place in Prague, um, but we are learning a person or two. <laughs> this feels like a weird way to explain it. We're learning philosophies of life of these specific people through their acts of sex and being in a relationship and having mistresses, basically. <laughs> um, I found, I'll read the back maybe for some better context. A young woman in love with a man torn between his love for her and his incorrigible womanizing, one of his mistresses and her humbly faithful lover. These are, they, these are the two couples whose story is told in this masterful novel. In a world in which lives are shaped by irrevocable choices and by a fortuitous <laughs> events, a world in which everything occurs but once, existence seems to lose its substance, its weight. Hence we f feel the unbearable likeness of being not only as the consequence of our pristine actions, but also in the public, public sphere and the two inevitably intertwine. Which I agree with that. I need to stop doing these right when I wake up because I finished this yesterday, but <laughs> I digress. Um, I loved this straight out the gate originally. I felt like it hit you with all these deep thoughts and deep questions and um, talking about just some interesting topics. Someone else has... Um, not done a lot in this book. Someone dog-eared a few pages and wrote on a few things. I said, I, I commented on one thing in here. I said, I didn't say anything, but it was a section that said, we can never know what to want because living only one life, we can neither compare it with our previous life nor perfect it in our lives to come. Like it was a lot of philosophical questioning just about life and choices and it definitely takes into play like the unbearable likeness of being and it equating feelings that you feel towards wanting to be free if I guess that's a good way to explain it there's one section in here that he talks about 
the meaning of and I thought it was a really interesting hold on let me let me look it up real quick ah it's vertigo it says anyone whose goal is something higher must expect someday to suffer vertigo what is vertigo fear of falling no vertigo is something other than fear of falling it is the voice of emptiness below us which tempts us lures us it's a desire to fall against which terrified we defend ourselves and i noticed that kind of theme throughout the book of the temptation of wanting to just give in um but i found this quote not a quote i found this review that just like it's a long one so sit with me you of course timestamps below to skip past this to the next book but i saw this quote um and i never said i gave i'm giving it a three star out of five but this is this just wraps everything up far better than i can think to say it but this is Kandera is an unconventional writer to say the least if you are looking for fully fleshed characters or a smooth plot the unbearable lightness of being is not for you which i agree because everything is so disjointed and a little chaotic and feels very unfinished but the chapters are extremely short especially in the beginning um moving on <laughs> Uh, Kandera merely uses plot and characters as tools or examples to explain his philosophy about life and that is what this novel is all about. He will provide a glimpse of his character's lives, hit the pause button, and then go on to explain all about what just happened, the philosophy and psychology which drives the lives of his characters and often real lives as well. In keeping with this format, the novel is fragmentary, fragmentary in structure. It is easy to see how a reader can get annoyed at the author's getting lost in his philosophical musings so very often. Yes. Um, but if you can find something mean, some meaning in those, the novel just might work for you. Which I found it in moments, and then other times it was like, okay, you're being too deep here, too often, but all the time. <laughs> and, and I got that through a good portion of the book. Um, and then it says, Decisions and Dilemmas, which I feel like this summarizes everything up really well. Kandera's characters seem to be, seem to, she must have forgot be, seem to be searching for an elusive something, trying to find that perfect place in life where they would, where they would want to live forever. However, it is difficult to know for sure the direction in which that perfect place lies. If they find their current lives suffocating, going the other way could be liberating. But is it worth leaving behind all that will be lost? The moment they take a step ahead, they begin feeling the pull of what they just had turning turned their back to. Often the choice is not between perfection and imperfection, it's a trade-off. The ability to shape our own lives, to some extent at least, is a power. Sometimes it can be a burden too. Specifically when there is no way of knowing what waits for us at the next corner. That is very much this book, 100%. Do we choose being happy today at the expense of what ifs plaguing us tomorrow? Or do we put us through an ordeal now in anticipation of it paying off in the future? What if we end up in a mess, unable to turn back? And here's a quote from the book. It says, and therein lies the whole of a man's plight. Human time does not run in circles. It runs ahead in a straight line. That is why man cannot be happy. Happiness is the longing for repetition, which, genius. Sometimes we can find the right answers only in retrospect, which, yes, 100%. I, I say this a lot, and I said this a lot. I was being interviewed for something yesterday, which I'll talk about in a life wrap up. So you may have either heard it before this section more than likely, but I said a few times in there and talking about just like deep topics of like, you only know things in hindsight. So same concept. And then another quote from the book, we can never know what we want because living only one life, we can either compare it with our lives our previous lives nor perf or nor perfect it in our lives to come which is exactly what i just read you from the book um and it says kandera speaks of the irony of human life having only one life to live makes the life choices difficult and wondrous it is also because of this very fact of living only one life that these life choices do not have much weight in the bigger picture and is it is 
this irony which causes the unbearable lightness of being which yes the only thing that relieves us from the unbearable lightness are fortuitous occurrences which love it or hate it have a say in making up our lives another quote just this section quote they human lives are composed like music guided by his sense of beauty an individual transform of fortuitous occurrence beethoven's music death under a train into a motive which then assumes a permanent place in the composition of the individual's life end quote now they cover the section love kandera does not speak of love in a poetic all beautiful manner agreed <laughs> What happens when one character packs her life in a suitcase and goes off to be with her lover? Is there music in the air fluttering butterflies? No, her stomach makes a rumbling sound the moment she sees her lover because she hasn't eaten anything all day. Quote from the book, quote, if a love is to be unforgettable, fortuities must immediately start fluttering down to it like birds to Francis Assis' shoulder, end quote. Finding love does not miraculously solve all of their problems. Love is only often accompanied by jealousy, mistrust, lies, deceit, and pain, which, yes, sometimes. <laughs> Yet they do find some strength in love and all they can do to hold on to it. Another quote from a book. Love is a battle, said Marie Claude, still smiling, and I plan to go on fighting to the end, end quote. Along with these, I told you this was a long review, but it just beautifully summarizes everything I feel about this book. Along with these, Kandera touches upon a few other themes as well. Some of those hit the right note, while there are parts that I found trite or pretentious or simply lacking any sense. Take this, from a, take this for example. One of the characters sleeps with every other woman who crosses his path. Kandera philosophizes, I can words, his physical desire and explains it as deeply seated intellectual curiosity. Nah, I don't buy that. They were just pretending to be, and they were, <laughs> then, I oh gosh, I take a minute, pause. <laughs> then there were pretending to be deep quotes that just went over my head, which yes, and this is an example, quote, Tomas did not realize at the time that metaphors are dangerous. Metaphors are not to be trifled with. A single metaphor can give birth to love, end quote. And the person writing this review said, um, what? <laughs> which I agree. Another thing I found odd that the author breaks the fourth wall and tries to be defensive about the novel. Yes. He comes and explains how he is not just telling a story, but investigating human lives. He tells us that the characters are merely figments of his imagination, so we shouldn't expect them to be realistic. He tells us that it is wrong to chide a novel for mysterious coincidences, so we shouldn't question the unrealistic events in the plot. Agreed. There are some flaws that I would have forgiven them even without the author explaining himself away. That was the end of their review, which yes to everything 100%. The first comment under this review says, couldn't agree more. It's a philosophical novel rather than a romantic one. Only by keeping that in mind can we really get through this wonderful book, which again, I agree. So that was a very long review of the unbearable lightness of being. I am torn about whether keeping this or not. Part of me feels or felt like if I sat down and reread it, maybe when I'm a little bit older in life, could I understand it in a different way, I guess? Because the, the philosophical points in here are wonderful, but it is definitely not a romance book. I'm not a romance genre girl anyway, so that aligns with me. But it was so fragmented and I got pretty damn confused. And when I get confused in a book, and maybe someone else feels this way, but when I get confused in a book, like with the 100 Years of Solitude for a prime example, I, not immediately, but it becomes disinteresting to me. And I, again, entirely on me, I don't push myself to then try to make sense of it. I just keep going on in the book hoping that it unravels itself because i feel like if you're reading this kind of back to back every day and i'm not reading anything in between when i read this um sometimes i don't understand why some things don't make any sense and that probably doesn't make any sense but 
to end this section right here. Um, it is September 24th. I don't know if you can see that at 8.35 a.m. Um, I'm going to hopefully be able to read one more book. You can't see behind me, but I have these right here that I'm reading. Um, I'm probably going to jump into Commonwealth. Um, and then I know I'm actively reading 1984, but someone told me to read A Brave New World with 1984 because of the duality of them or the different takes on them. So I'm probably going to try to save those till November time. Um, maybe I'll rush through Commonwealth or something else. I guess you'll know if you see another book wrap up for the end of this month. But yeah, Unbearable Lightness of Being. Do I recommend maybe you have to be in the right headspace for it i think otherwise i can see it as extremely aggravating but yeah the unbearable lightness of being the little puck go and now that we're back from all the books that i read in september i think the first most obvious life update maybe is i did go back to a little bit of purple my hair is doing some really interesting things i noticed i got a perm when i was 11 or 12 and it like ever since that faded over the years no matter how much I've dyed it and cut it my hair has this like natural wave to it and I seem to have found just a spot in my bangs that just wants to like do this little curly cue right here on this right side so it's been interesting like I didn't curl my hair or anything my hair I mean it looks a little bit like bedhead because it kind of is but my hair just kind of naturally has this little wavy curl to it um, all the time if I don't like straighten or anything. But what I was saying is I added the purple back in a little bit. I missed it. I think at this stage, um, after having it really for six years of my whole head kind of dyed different colors, which if you look through my videos, that's pretty obvious. I was pretty leaning to like purples and blues for a very long time. Um, but I don't think I want to go back to like doing my whole head. I think I just want to like stay on this lower half and kind of phase it in. Um, because I still love the color and I still feel like it fits me and my personality and what I want to like exude well enough to keep that going. <laughs> um, another big life update, which I will put in the iCard up here. Um, is I got interviewed um, by a fellow YouTuber, Catman Joe, um, and his partner, I'm blanking on his name, I forgot to write it down, um, on their podcast. And he reached out to me about this a couple of months ago. Um, well, maybe the podcast, being interviewed for the podcast, maybe a little over a month ago. Um, but we made that happen this last weekend. It came out yesterday, because I'm going to be posting this <clears throat> I'm filming this on Friday, the interview comes out on Saturday, and I'm posting this video on Sunday. So the interview came out yesterday, I will iCard it. It was such a cool experience, um, and we deep dive more. I, th I don't know how long it will be, we were kind of in that interview process for almost like three hours, um, which is crazy. Um, but it was such a cool experience. They were wonderful dudes, the questions they came up with, the research they did on me, and just the conversations that we got into it was one of my favorite parts of this month. Just being able to connect with other people because I've known Catman Joe kind of off and on for at least over a year now. We deep dive on that topic more throughout several questions in that interview. Um, so yes, please go watch that again. If I didn't already, I card <laughs> and I'll link it below and everything. That was such a fun experience. Honestly, it was something I never really thought about doing, but something that was like just incredible. It was just awesome to do. Um, so that was probably my favorite like life related thing that I did or update that I have. Um, another big thing this month, which maybe I talked about being stressed, was I ended up having um, two swollen lymph nodes um, which ended up in a result, um, an ultrasound, um, and I got a bunch of blood work done, um, <laughs> and it was kind of crazy there for a couple of weeks because 
there's some lymphoma present um, in within family and so I was panicking for that and just how awful I had felt for a couple of weeks um, I got really nervous about a lot of things but it was like all up in kind of like this section um, and I had a lot of difficulty swallowing um, and it still is there a little bit I mean cutting to the chase it wasn't anything bad thank God but I still have a little bit of difficulty swallowing and just like just some pain associated but everything's fine I'm okay I go back for more blood work um, and to the middle to end of October just to make sure everything's leveled out but what it ended up being was the Epstein-Barr virus which is basically mono <laughs> if you've ever heard of mono I never caught it I guess I don't know how I got it um I was telling my aunt about it you know like keeping her just up to date that I had you know these swollen lymph nodes and given family history and all that kind of stuff um, and she told me that like right now she heard it's like kind of running rampant through schools through the drinking fountains, I guess. I don't know. Um, I remember it only being a thing when I was in high school and it's the kissing virus. Um, so it didn't make sense to me how I caught it, but the infection and the pain and the difficulty swallowing all started after I had... Um, gone to the dentist and so my doctor was like it's a very rare thing but maybe you caught it through this sounds so gross I almost threw up <laughs> when she was talking about it just like gagging that I caught the virus through possibly infected um like equipment from the dentist which is just so disgusting um and obviously I can't validate that I could reach out to them um my aunt was like, you could ask them for, you know, records of cleaning their stuff and whatever, but I am, for the most part, better now. My blood work came back positive for that, um, but everything else in my blood work and the ultrasound, everything on the ultrasound showed, like, you know, some swollenness, but everything benign, but all my blood work showed that I am middle of the grade, in the green, healthy, on all the blood, you know, test things that she ran, which is really awesome. So that was a big relief to get that blood work back even before I had the ultrasound. Um, but yeah, mono, the kissing virus in my early thirties, like what the hell? <laughs> but yeah, I, I couldn't, um, think my son wasn't feeling well before that. So maybe he caught it from school. I don't know. Regardless, I'm okay. Everything's fine. Um, the other thing is like just how dang busy I've been with editing. Um, I've done two weddings, a lifestyle, and two births, and I have two more births to edit for October um, going into it. Uh, or maybe one's a birth and one's a lifestyle video to edit. Um, so just been really busy between trying to be more consistent with making content for YouTube, doing gaming, making sure I'm getting my time into game, you know, with my friends on the SMP, <clears throat> on top of just all of that, on top of working four days a week, on top of doing my own business of editing all this stuff and film creation and then content creation here like i've just been hella busy in september which hasn't been a bad thing it's really setting me up for success in future plans as well um which leads me right into the next one is working out kinks of long-term goals um is what i wrote in my little note section to keep myself on track for the month um just a lot of moving parts a different discussion that has sparked different ideas that has honestly changed everything again like <laughs> i maybe this is just a natural human thing like and i think it is i think it's not as dramatic as i'm making it out to be um but there's just like so much that can change so much <laughs> or there seems to be like so little that can change so much and like different plans to obtain and achieve certain goals and things is kind of crazy just how quickly things like that can happen um but yeah i think that's all of my like life related things in september i bought a new plant 
I repotted another one and I've been really good about restricting myself on just getting six million plants. <laughs> uh, but the last section is always, not always, but another, the last words, the last section I usually cover, you know, kind of through this whole situation is the games that I played for the month. And obviously Minecraft's a given. I played some Phasmophobia with friends. I think um, someone streamed it. I think my husband streamed it. Um, but I did my own live stream of The Last Campfire, which was such a cute game and the music is so pretty. And I did a noob streamer thing of my first time streaming a game in a long time and my audio wasn't playing. I, I was going no mic, but I think I disconnected the audio from the gameplay to be played on stream. So it was a fully silent stream and I played for five and a half hours to beat the game. <laughs> <laughs> and it was silent. I left it up. It'll be under like the indie game playthrough. Um, that's a playlist on my channel. Um, I think it just warrants that I need to do a replay where, you know, actually it's all working at some point. Um, and then the other thing because of October, we are leaning into October, which again, favorite month, Halloween, my birthday, I'm turning 33 on the 6th. Um, my tradition every year is to go to a pumpkin patch and get a pumpkin and apple cider and go get myself a dessert and just celebrate things and we have so many plans in this month of just fun stuff yeah just stuff happening in october and what i was trying to say is spooky season and all this stuff and i'm decorating for halloween actually tomorrow on the first of october um but it's leading me into spooky gameplay. So every Friday of October, I'm releasing an entire gameplay of a indie scary horror, not think cutesy horror. Like who am I? Who am I? Look at my shirt, cutesy. Um, this is for Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. If anyone doesn't know, loved this show when it came out when I was in middle school. <laughs> it came out in 2004, so. Um, yeah, love this show. Um, but yeah, QC Horror. On that note, uh, the first one coming up is on October 7th on the Friday, and it is the entire game playthrough of Fran Bo. The week after that will be Little Misfortune, and I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do for the last two weeks, but I think I'm going to go the Switch game of Creepy Tale and Creepy Tale 2. So you can look into those trailers if you want to, but those are coming for all of October. And if I can keep it up and it goes well, maybe that's something I could keep up in the future of playing just more indie games. That's everything for September. And I'm so excited for October to deep dive in the books about myself. And honestly, maybe October will be more like a vlog of, you know, going around to the pumpkin patch and all this kind of stuff that I really love about October. Um, but yeah, that's my wrap up for September. Thank you guys for watching and September was a damn good month and please check out that interview and I hope everyone's doing well and I'm so excited for spooky October and all the games. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys. Literally, it should be a joke at this point because my camera just died as I was saying bye and I have batteries charged but they're downstairs and I was just going to say bye. So iPhone outro yet again. Here we are. But yeah, I'm excited. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you stayed this long, hopefully you enjoy the games in October. And I can't wait for October wrap up and just to experience the best month of the year in my opinion. But be well, babes, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!